So we're going to start on wrath and love tonight, but before we start, what are we going to do? Clean ourselves up. We're going to clean ourselves up because we're going to uh, get going here. And uh, so, so confess your sins. You know what to do. Confess your sins so uh, you can prepare to receive some teaching. Here we go. God, we come before you humbled. We seek your forgiveness of our sins that we might understand your word, who you are, and your call upon our lives. We confess our sins, and your word tells us that if we confess our sins, we are forgiven of those sins. Through Jesus Emmanuel, God with us, and we thank you for that. Tonight, Lord, we seek to understand your wrath, and we approach, <clears throat> approach your throne, throne with, with reverence and, and awe, and understand that, that you are God of everything, all things, and you are sovereign over everything. And so help us understand your wrath as we try to understand your sin and try to understand evil and all these things that we've been studying. Tonight, Lord, we want to focus on your wrath, so give us a clear mind to receive the, the word that you would have for us. Thank you, Lord, for this room. Thank you for those who are with us tonight. We ask for your blessings upon them. And Jesus, the Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Raise your hand if you love the wrath of God. Okay. okay. You should. Because it's part of God's nature. It's, it's part of God. The reason you probably don't is you, you have a hard time with, with wrath. <laughs> you, don't, you don't like that. You don't like that. And it's kind of like you, you, you don't like the hatred of God. You don't like that he hates. And you don't like that he tells us that we're supposed to hate. We, we, we've learned that we're supposed to love and God is love. But to understand God in his totality, we, we kind of have to get around our preconceived idea of what his wrath is. We can't help but believe that he is wrathful. Do you believe that? Yes. Okay. And have you... Have you I, well, Somebody please tell me, how do you know he is wrathful? Uh, Lawrence, how, how do you know God is wrathful? He's demonstrated it. Okay, I what mean, else do you through, know? Through history, he's demonstrated it, and, and through the word, he says that he is. He flat out says it. Um, I, I actually, I'm in, I'm in, I've been in Proverbs for the last few days, and just in the first five chapters of Proverbs, he says 20 times, at least 20 times, of the different characteristics, that if people exhibit them, not only the issue that he has with it, but he despise it, it's a, it, it, like the word that we would use would be to despise that type of behavior. Anybody else? Every time you see a rainbow, he demonstrated. He demonstrated, but what did he do before the rainbow? He he had we he had wrath on who? Cain on his creation. He was he said, "I had it up." Sodom and Gomorrah. Why didn't he do it? earlier why didn't he wait so long for the world to get so evil why why didn't he do it earlier brian why not what, what took him so long to flood the earth because he has patience he has patience what else mercy mercy who said that that he has mercy okay so he gives us time to figure out our sins that's like 
are like us. Yeah, I've sinned. It takes me a long time to realize it, and boy, I sure don't want to repent of it, let alone think about it. Or admit so, it. or admit it. I don't want to do that. Okay. So, okay, uh, uh, hey Rick, along with that, and this is a question that I personally have always had: Why did why? When it comes to why did he why does he wait so long or why does he give us so much time? Why does it take so much time for Jesus to come? You know the answer for that. So that's a question I actually have always had personally. Yeah. Um, let me get through these slides. This is this is stuff we've been through. We, we've talked about. The, um, I told you to be cautious of the word uh, Ionius. I said be cautious and watch the cosmos and open gun to understand. Some translations don't quite get it right, and so be careful when you read. Your, your Bible, even the most literal, still have a problem with So just be careful of these words. We talked about ontology, uh, ontology, what and when. That's when, when Walton came and spoke to us, okay? Um, the purpose of ontology, and the purpose is to what, Don? What's the purpose? What, what are we supposed to do? Bring order. We're supposed to bring order. We're supposed to bring order to the creation, okay? God made material to be employed, so we work in, in cultures. Talk about it. And in the last three weeks, we've been, what have we been covering, Brian? Mental health. Mental health, okay? So we, we're now finished with all the topic, and so we're approaching, we're, we're through, almost finished, we're coming to the end now. And so we've had a lot. One of the things I've given you that I wanted you to see is this one, I want to bring this up again. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was and, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And I brought that up and I said, you probably never thought that you're in heaven, or did you? You, you never probably thought, that I, you're waiting for to go someplace for heaven. Right. But, but what does this scripture say? It's, it's, it's here, right? I doubt being you've ever been told. I thought you've ever been told that in going to your church. Have you ever heard of that before? No. Okay. So it brings us to the field of dreams when the coach, <laughs> the, uh, the the ball player comes up and says, uh, "Is this heaven?" Yeah. Right. And I got the feeling somewhere along that line, somebody knew some <clears throat> scripture. I I think somebody knew, "Is this heaven?" And what did uh, Cosmo say? No, this is Iowa. Okay? So there's a little something. That's true. And you, you only know what you've been taught. You only can know what you've been taught. So tonight, you might learn something new. And when you get faced with something new that you don't like, it's tough to, it's tough to, uh, I, don't, I, I don't believe them. It's not fair. And all of us have had those. You had some of those, Brian? You had a few things like, oh, I don't want to learn this. Oh, I, I don't agree with it. Okay? So tonight, what is the wrath and the anger of God? His indignation, his opposition to sin. God is holy and you are not. And God's wrath is holy. Got that? God's wrath, he has a purpose for his wrath. Like when Noe came and said, God has a purpose for evil. And you guys all, and I, myself too, say, man, I don't like to hear that. I don't, I don't want that in and out. Man, that goes and grows me against the grain. Well, God is holy. And as Lawrence said, we, we see throughout Scripture and in Proverbs, you said we're in Proverbs. Okay, we know that. Well, that means his wrath is holy too. So holy means what? Set aside, separate. We talked about the Holy Spirit. The set aside, separate the spirit, the power, the, the set-aside power. The set-aside power, when you think of Holy Spirit, you think of set-aside power. When you think of a holy wrath, set-aside power for that. He only uses that wrath when he's ready to use it. When his what runs out? Mercy. mercy. When his mercy runs out. But at the same time, God is always merciful, right? God is Forever merciful. You read that. And you Oh, God loves. God's always merciful. God always forgives. Right? Right? Right. Okay. Right. So his, in his character, he is always mercy, merciful. But he does not have to exhibit that mercy all the time. 
He is in control of that. Not us. We are not holy, and our sin is not holy. So we have a conflict with God. Well, I need somebody to read some of these passages. So um, who wants to read some? Okay. Okay, take me soon. Did not your fathers act in this way, and did not our God bring all this disaster on us and on this city? Now you are bringing more wrath on Israel by profound, profaning the Sabbath. Keep going. Nehemiah 13, 18. Pour out your anger on the nations that do not know you and the kingdoms that do not call upon your name. Psalm 79, 6. Will you be angry with us always? Will you prolong your wrath to all generations? Psalm 85, 5. Now I will soon pour out my wrath upon you and spend my anger against you and judge you accordingly to your ways. And I will punish you for all your abominations. Ezekiel 7, 8. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them on the day of the wrath of the Lord. In the fire and of his jealousy, all the earth shall be consumed. For a full and sudden end, he will make all of the inhabitants of the earth. Zephaniah 1.18. Why is this guy here? Does anybody have any idea why I would put a picture of this guy here? Why? He's a warrior. He's a warrior. He's a soldier. Probably depicts nations that God brought up to come against the northern kingdom and the southern in kingdom in uh, 722 B.C. and 586 B.C. Keep going, Susan. Uh, that when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Matthew 3, 7. This is the New Testament now. The old, that was the Old Testament, some pastor. And now Susan's reading the New Testament. Okay, so, so you can see. Alas what. for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days, for there will be great distress upon the earth and the wrath against this people. Luke 21, 23. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord, Romans 12, 19. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of his conscience, Romans 13, 5. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. Is that the news tonight? No. Sorry. You see, though, no, what, what, there's another. What this guy is here, right? Why is he there? Because we need. Is that a Roman soldier? Well, it's just it's a soldier, right? That's Full not a Roman soldier. God. That's a, uh, this is really soldier, but that, that's. Full armor of God. Okay. Keep going, Susan. Here's wrath from Revelation. So you had Old Testament. I've given you some New Testament, and now Susan's going to read. The wrath mentioned in <clears throat> Revelation. Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who is seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Uh, Revelation 6.16 6, And one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls full of the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. Revelation 15.7 from his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread on the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God, the Almighty. Revelation 19. Okay, so what, what do we have here? Now, this is a picture from AD 70, the destruction of the Jerusalem, the destruction of the temple in AD 70, and we have Roman soldiers here persecuting the Jews, destroying the temple. Temple's ablaze, and this is a horrible, a horrible destruction of humanity. Really terrible, okay? And the wrath of God was put out, and, and who's there? 
soldier. Okay, soldier's there. The two Greek words are thymos and orges. Okay, those are the two Greek words in the New Testament that come for the meaning of wrath, anger, indignation. They're somewhat similar, but we find them used throughout uh, the New Testament. They're, those are the two main words. Okay. Can I, real quick? Yeah. Can you go back so, once? So, if you've noticed with all of the verses and even others that weren't li that weren't listed that Susan read, how it uses wrath, the wrath of God, or it, it always words it something similar to that. And I'm not talking about the tribulation when it's timed or anything like that, but there is a difference, and a lot of people make this confusion. They, they, they use those words interchangeably. Tribulation and wrath mean two different two things different in things. Scripture, so make sure and distinguish that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a good point. Say it again louder. Make sure you distinguish between tribulation and wrath because they are two different things, and they come from two different sources. Yeah, they're not the same. And I'm not talking today about the tribulation. I'm it's not talking that. I'm not just. talking that. Okay. All right. It refers to both a human and divine anger. It's our anger. You ever been, Dave, you ever been angry? <laughs> Lisa? Today. <laughs> okay. Or a becoming angry. So our anger tends to grow. Have you ever had something that it just kind of ticks you off, and then you just, just really, and then you explode, right? It's like a like a fuse, okay? The same thing with God. God has a fuse, and it burns so long, and then poof, uh, that's it, it's over. So, this word anger means rage filled up. Enough. You hit a boiling point, okay? So, a couple of people here. Jorge from the Old Testament is Isaiah two twenty two. It means Breath in his nostrils. So when you get angry, it's like this. Okay? You ever see two fighters, right? And the fighters, when they're angry, they're, they, they, they rub their nose. They're so angry. They're filled with, and, and that's an indication of anger. And that's where the word porges come up. It means a breath. Okay? Trembling or snorting or rage, jealous, bitter with cause, does not have to last forever. Anger does not have to last forever. Okay, so you have anger. But for my one, oh, okay, I'm done. I'm done. Right? You cannot continue to stay angry. Okay, so then we have our good friend here. It's a human passion. It's an outburst. It's too, it, your anger is supposed to be controlled. A quick temper is not an indication of a bishop or of anybody who should be doing ministry work. It's not, it, Brian, you shouldn't be involved in ministry if you're quick to anger. Not that you shouldn't get angry, but, but if you're quick to anger, <laughs> you are not set for ministry. Okay? You just you should be not be in ministry. And I've met so many people involved in ministry who are, oh, that, they just jump on it without... Wait a minute, think, think, slow down, hold, hold it, hold it. People involved in ministry who do not have patience have no business being in ministry, okay? It's not always negative. As a matter of fact, you're told both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Read the bottom line, Susan. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Ephesians 4, 26, 27. Be angry and do not sin. Ponder in your own hearts on your beds and be silent. Psalm 4. four. Rich, yeah. do you and Rada have, have an argument at night and you go to bed angry at each other? or I Try not to. Try not to. Unless I did something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and that never happens, Justin. <laughs> but I just... <laughs> Don't let it. Be, it's it's okay to be angry, but don't don't go to bed with it. You, you, you bring it out and talk until you say, okay, I I'm, I I want to put my anger away. Put it away. Doesn't mean you don't have it. You just put it away. Okay. We're angry at you, Tom. <laughs> so the question is, your your question is these five questions. <clears throat> 
Tonight is a biblical theological study. A biblical theological. We're going to not we're not doing a Bible study tonight. Right? We're not doing a Bible study tonight. We're doing a theological study of God's wrath from the Bible. Got it? We're, this is not a Bible study. This is a theological study of God's wrath from the Bible. Okay? The questions are, there's five of them, where does God's wrath come from? Where does it come from? Next question is, how does wrath, how does it come about? When does God's wrath come? When, it, when is, when am I going to get it? And why does God's wrath come? Okay? Lisa, where's God's wrath come from? Where's it come from? Where's it come from? It comes from from when we don't do what we were told to do. No, that that that's what causes it. Where does it come from? You did something bad, and now the wrath has to come from somewhere. Where's it come from? D, where do you think it comes from? God. Well, it has to come from God. Okay, it comes from God. <laughs> but, but, now remember, we're looking at the Bible. We're looking at the Bible. Where does the scriptures indicate that God that, that wrath comes from? Judgment. Judgment? No. His holy righteousness. His, his creation is sovereign. It's his. Okay. I'm going to give you what the scripture says where it comes from. Okay. Susan, are you ready to read some more? Sure. Oh. Why do you think the, that... Because it comes Where does it weather. come from? <laughs> the clouds. <laughs> <laughs> What's the passage, Lawrence, where God says, you will see me coming on the clouds. Coming on the clouds. And glory. You will see me coming on the clouds. So where does it come from? Above. <laughs> you will see me coming on the clouds in judgment. You will see me I'm coming on the clouds. Where does it come from? Clouds. clouds. <laughs> it comes from the clouds. Now, where are the clouds? The sky. Okay. Now, what? I'm, I'm, this is biblical theology. I'm giving you Bible proof of where this stuff comes from. My professor Wheaton would, would do this to me. I'd, I'd answer the questions at all of us, and, and he'd say, no, 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 no. You need to go on a half hour, no, 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 until he showed this to us. Go ahead, Susan. Judgment against Syria. For behold, the Lord is coming out of his place and will come down and tread upon the high places of the earth. Might go at 1 3. Judah prays for deliverance. For behold, the Lord is coming out from the place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. And the earth will be, will disclose the blood shed on it, and will no more cover its slain. Isaiah 26, 21. Siege of Jerusalem. But the multitude of your foreign foes shall be like small dust, and the multitude of the ruthless like pa passing chaff. And in an instant, suddenly, you will be visited by the Lord of hosts, with thunder and with earthquakes and great noise, with the whirlwind and the tempest and the flame of the devouring, devouring fire, Isaiah 29, 5 and 6, Tower of Babel, and the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which their children of man had built, Genesis 11, 5, Sodom and Gomorrah. Then the Lord said, because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and their sin is very grave. I will go down to see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me. And if not, I will, I will know. Okay. Genesis 18. So now I'm going to bring up Walton. You have to go back into a mindset of Jews, of Hebrews, of the people of that culture at the time, because they didn't have the Hubble telescope. 
Got it? They had no idea that that thing up there in the sky at night, the moon, that someone was going to lay, even be on there someday. They, they didn't even know that the world was round. They, they had no idea. So you have to take your mindset when you're studying this to go back and understand what, what are they looking at. And for them, they see that, okay, when, when they're writing these things, that God is what? He's coming down. Where does the wrath come? It comes down. down. It's coming down. Okay? Remember, this is biblical theology. So you're going to see scriptures here that tell you about where it comes from. Susan, keep going. To Moses, then the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and I've heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, a place of the Canaanite, Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Pre Pre Perizzites, <laughs> the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Exodus 3, 7 through 8. To Moses, and the Lord <laughs> said to Moses, Behold, I am coming to you in a thick cloud. Hold, stop. I am coming to you in a thick cloud. Now remember, if you're a Hebrew reading this in, in the scriptures of their time, and you go and evangelize to other the parasites and the Jebusites and, and to the okay, you're telling them our God is the one that comes down. Well, what 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 do you think of in, in those days when you would hear a lightning bolt, you would think, holy mackerel. Ooh, ooh. And angry. a storm and a wind and, and, and they have no way to control it in their their structures are blown away because they can't. And so for them, the idea of God's wrath was a physical reality. Got it? Okay. But beyond the physical reality, there's something else that, that you want, I want you to remember. And that is that those two soldiers that I showed you. Because okay, I'm going to show you how God's wrath works. That's coming up. Keep going, Susan. <laughs> So the Lord came from Sinai and dawned from the seer upon us. He shone forth from Mount Paran. He came from the 10,000 of holy ones. Is that, am I right? No, right? Oh, I no. 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 Oh, he gave, it, he gave me a whole new I slide. Sorry. I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking I've got to be in the middle. Moses listens to Yahweh. Then the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be elders of the people and the officers over them and bring them to the tent of meeting and then let them take their stand here with you and I will come down and talk with you no. there and I will I will take some of the spirit that is on you and put it on them and they shall bear the burden of the people with you so that you may not bear it yourself alone okay no. God is talking to Moses now. And he's telling him, I'm talking with you now, but I'm going to come down and talk to you down there. Okay? Go ahead, Susan. This is the blessing of which Moses, the man of God, blessed the people of Israel before his death. He said, The Lord came from Sinai and dawned from Seir upon us. He shone forth from Mount Paran. He came from the ten thousands of holy ones with flaming fire at his right hand. He came from the ten thousands with what? With fire. fire. Okay, now, now be, be careful because fire is considered a what? It purifies things, right? It's not always bad. Fire is really good because what's it do? It cleans it things out. out. Okay, so... Read on, Susan. For thus the Lord said to me, as a lion or a young lion growls over his prey, and when a band of shepherds is called out against him, he is not terrified by their shouting or daunted at their noise. So the Lord of hosts will come down to fight on Mount Zion and on its hill. Okay, now, are you getting it? Are you understanding that God comes down? So where does he come from? He comes from up 
the heavens. He comes. He's up there, right? It doesn't mean he's not with us, but it means he's up there. And, and when he has to come down and do something, now I'm coming down. Susan? Last one. Repentance prayer. When you did awesome things that we did not look for you, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence, Isaiah 64, 3. Thanksgiving, he bowed the heavens and came down. Thick darkness was under his feet, Psalm 18, 9. Indignation of God, for behold, the Lord will come in fire, okay. and his chariots like the whirlwind to render his anger in fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire will the Lord enter into judgment and by his sword with all flesh and, the, and those slain by the Lord shall be many Isaiah 66 50. acceptable sacrifice our God comes down he does not keep silence before him is a devouring fire around him a mighty tempest but, uh, Psalm 53 Come to judge before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. Judging, get one more. Yes. So where does he come from? He comes down. down. He comes down. Biblically theological. That's what the Bible, that's what it says. He goes. He comes down. So get that idea because you are not you, you are not sitting in Lamont, Illinois, in two twenty two. Now you're a Jew Hebrew back in the day, and now you've got to think in the mindset. Oh well, ooh, God's going to come back, okay? And He's coming down here. Now, biblically, how has He and how does He both pass? How has He? And how does he? Because he still keeps doing it, right? We're still on. We're still here. So does God's wrath still come down? I'm asking. I mean, does God's wrath? I think so. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll do a little segue here. Do you think there's something to do with God's wrath between Russia and the Ukraine? Mm -hmm. Could be. Yeah. Yep. Do you think that? Do you think it has anything to do with abortion in this world? Mm -hmm. For me, Susan said, "Is there? You think this this wrath of, of whatever's going on in in the Ukraine and the Russians have anything to do with abortion or sacrificing your children? Or sacrificing your children? Okay. So now you know you know where you know where you got the where now. Okay, you, you got the where. Okay, so you know that God's wrath comes down. It comes down. It comes down." It doesn't come across, it doesn't come up, it comes down, okay? How does his wrath come? How does it come? How, how? Not where, we know where. Came as a flood. Now how does it come down? Came as a flood. Keep going, Susan. Oracle to Egypt. An oracle concerning Egypt. Behold, the Lord is riding on a swift cloud and comes to Egypt. And the idols of Egypt will tremble at his presence, and the heart of the Egyptians will melt within them. Isaiah 19, 1. Call to repentance on Israel. Behold, he comes up like clouds, his chariots like the whirlwind, his horses are swifter than eagles. Woe to us, for we are ruined. Jeremiah 4, 13. Lamentation on Egypt. For the day is near, the day of the Lord is near. It will be a day of clouds, a time of doom for the nations. Read that whole thing again. Read that one, that one, in particular one, read that one again. For the day is near. The day is near. The day of the Lord is near. It will be a day of clouds, a time of doom for the nations. Okay. It'll be a day of clouds, a time of doom. You're not in Lamont in 222. Go back. 
Okay, you're walking around in their days and you're trying to find what's going on here, okay? And the metaphor or the simile, where's where's your wife? Okay. Her sister. Okay. When she gave us a presentation on the, the terminology, she talked about metaphors and similes. Okay. You don't take this literal. You don't take this literal. Because you got God standing on a cloud and he's well, his feet are gonna pass through the like he doesn't have a parachute, he's gonna fall through the clouds. Because so we think the literal clouds. But this is a metaphor, okay? It's a metaphor for a judgment to come. So when you hear coming on the clouds, that is a judgment, it's coming. Keep going, Susan. Uh, let's see, thanksgiving for scattering enemies. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds. Rides in the clouds. By his name, Yah, and rejoice before him. Psalm okay. 68 describing God. He lays the beams of his chambers on the waters. He makes the clouds his chariots. He rides on the wings of the wind, and he makes his messengers wings, winds his ministers a flaming fire. Okay. Judgment on Egypt at, okay, you can say that word. <laughs> Hair how whatever the day shall be dark when I break there will there the yoke bars of Egypt and her proud might shall come to an end in her she shall be covered by a cloud and her daughters shall go into captivity thanksgiving for victory he bowed the heavens bowed the heavens and came down thick darkness was under his feet. He rode on the cherub and flew. He came swiftly on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering, his canopy around him, thick clouds, dark with water. Out of the brightness before him, hailstones and coals of fire broke through the clouds. David's thanksgiving. He bowed the, he bowed the heavens and came down. Thick and darkness was under his feet. He rode on the cherub and flew. He's, he was seen on the wings of the wind. He made darkness around him his canopy. Thick clouds a gathering of water. Second Samuel. Nahum's introduction. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and the Lord will by no means clear the guilty. His way is in a whirlwind storm and the clouds are dust of his feet. How so far? What have you learned? How does he come? How, what? And what is how? How does he come? Clouds. clouds. Okay. Where does he come from? He comes down. How does he come down? How? 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 On, the clouds. On the clouds. Okay. Metaphors, similes, right? We're not talking literal here. We're, we're talking away. Now, you've seen multiple passages throughout the Old Testament, throughout the New Testament of this reference. So here's where you do your word study. But you don't use just a word study on the NIV, on the ESV, on the NASB. You gotta do word studies on all of them and you have to do a word study of the Greek. Of, on what word? Clouds. Because you find, you see clouds, what is this thing? So you find out. Hey Rick, one more. Quick. Yep. Uh, there's a there's a distinction that I I just saw while she's reading this I've never seen before, so I don't even know what it all means. Bring it up. Through the Torah, when they're doing the law with the sacrifices and all of the the purification, it's purified with clean water. Purified with clean water. When we get saved, it is okay. the water of baptism. It's cleansing every single one of these that mentions not just the clouds but the water within. It's dark. It's dirty. I, I, what it all means obviously has to do with judgment, but I ju I've never seen that before, so that's the first time I've noticed that. Some more, Susan. Joel's call to repentance. Blow a trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is a near, a day of darkness and gloom, 
a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness, there is spread upon the mountains a great and powerful people. They are like their, their life has never been before, nor will it be again, and after them through the years of all generations. Coming judgment of Judah, the great day of the Lord is near, and near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The mighty man cries aloud there. A day of wrath is that day. A day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the loft, lofty battlements. Now, look, look here. Battle cry. Why did they put those soldiers up there? It's a battle. God's wrath has always been accompanied by what? Nations fighting. Yeah. We see Babylon defeating Egypt. We see Judah invading Syria. We, we see wars of nations fighting I nations. Mean. And within that is where God's wrath is. So God will use a nation to chastise another nation. And that's God using a nation, right? And, we're, and you, you'll see that, that through, throughout. You'll see that happened with Nineveh. It happened with Egypt. That happened with Babylon. It happened with Judah. It happened with the northern kingdom, southern kingdom. They were always invaded. By, and that's where we always see clouds. So all these passages that you see were in reference to some nation overtaking another one. Why would that nation have? Why would that do? Because, because God's wrath is being poured out. Biblically, that's what we see with God's rest. Oh, it's poured out. How's it, how does he pour? I pour that out by bringing one nation against another nation. I don't necessarily bring it out by bringing one man, a whole nation. Even David, who, who, who uh, took care of Goliath, <laughs> it wasn't just David and Goliath there. There were two nations there, right? It just happened that they, they said, well, let's just let's not kill everybody. Let's just see if we can figure this out, right? So now, you know where God's wrath comes from. It comes down, okay? And you know how it comes. How does it come? It comes on clouds, got it? Metaphors and similes, okay? We're not contemplating uh, literalness here. We're saying, okay, I, I gotta understand. Okay, that's right. I know where it's come from now. I know how it comes. Now, when does it come? When does God's wrath come? Now, I have, I have a whole, I, I, I used to have just one, one clock here. I, I was, when I was, Ron and I were talking, I was putting this together. And I had one clock here. But I realized that there are an end of ages. There's a lot of end of the ages, right? So there's a lot of ends. Here's one. Here's one to end. Here, uh, the, these are ends of ages, ends of time periods. I am done letting Assyria take control. I'm done with that. I'm done with Nineveh. I, 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 I give the Ninevites time. I know I sent uh, who's the whale guy? Jonah. 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 I know I sent Jonah there. He and he he did finally go to Nineveh and he saved. But about 200, 300 years later, what happened? Not that Jonah didn't do what he was supposed to do. He did a great job. Thank you. No, did great. But in the end, what did God do to Nineveh? It was destroyed. Okay. How? Well, God came in the clouds. So when you see these clocks here, okay. Incidentally, you may be interested to know there is no translation Bible that says the end of the world or the end of time. It's not in there. The translation is, it's the time of the end, or the time of the end of the age. All kinds of ages differ. Everything, everything, everything changes, everything, everything comes to an end. Everything comes to an end. Everything comes to an end. I can't play basketball like I used to. 
the age of me playing basketball are over. I'm lucky if I can walk down the street with my ankles. That age is over. What age is in for you, Ron? What age is in for you? Well, soon to be having kids in the house, we have so. Lisa, what's an age that is in for you? Well, not working anymore was the end of the age. <clears throat> You're right there. What's an age that is ended for you? I don't know. Are you going to be a mother again? Is that age ended for you? Okay. Rich, what age is ended for you? Mm. Nothing yet. Fatherhood. There you go. I'm going to on her coattails. <laughs> D, what's an age is ended for you? What, what is something that you're raising kids? Yeah. Being single. Being single. Whoa. But I'm not single. That's an, that's an age. <laughs> Willard, what's an age that's ended for you? Working. Not going to work all the time. <laughs> March, what's an age that is ended for you? Winter. Hallelujah. Susan, what's an age that is ended for you? End of an age. Uh, I think maybe it's motherhood. Okay. Don, what's an age that is ended for you? Being, uh, age is catching up with me. I can <laughs> no longer do the things I didn't even think about. Now I have, can I get through this? Will I make a spectacle of myself <laughs> trying to remain youthful and then draw attention to myself? And that, that's, that's horrible to me. And I now have to face that. So I'm the old man. That's an age. Dave, what's an age that is in it for you? Many ages. I was going to say motherhood, but the. But <laughs> <laughs> Willard took that one. <laughs> you know, okay. So, yeah, just like everybody else, getting older, yeah. many different things I did in my youth I can't do now. Only in my mind. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Don? I don't know. I got, uh, obviously, probably fatherhood, but I, I, I always look like, I just saw somebody say, I feel like I'm just getting started. I want to be like Caleb and keep going to the next mountain and Good. try and do different things. And, and Joshua said, number my days, you know, I want to make them count. Right. But obviously, I, I, like I, I do remodel and I can get on my knees, but I just, I just can't get up. <laughs> <laughs> so that age, when well, you were younger, not, getting on your knees, no, not a big deal. No. Yeah. But now you need some pads. Oh, I got, I got pads. I got glasses. I, I'm trying to get hearing aids. So <laughs> <laughs> hearing aids. Is the end of the but man, I was half selective hearing anyway. So what? <laughs> Tommy, what's an age that is ended for you? Uh, the age of retirement. I'm just going to keep on working because I love it so much. Like you, What's an age though that has ended? I'm looking for an age, something that is over. Retirement is over for me. Retirement is over for you? Yes. You think it's ever going to come back to you? I don't think so. Carol? What's an age that has ended for you? Spring cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> Donna? Well, sadly, I think the age of my love of grass cutting. <laughs> oh, I don't think I can. I don't like, no. I don't know, it's getting harder and harder. Yeah. So, and I, you know, that was, I love grass cutting and I still enjoy it, but it's just getting harder and harder. <laughs> Jane? Uh, having children living in our home. Oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, brother. Cool. Brian? The age has ended where I can sleep the whole night without, without going potty about three times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we all know, we, we know where, we know where God's wrath, oh, it, yeah, right there. we know where God's wrath comes from, it comes down, okay? We know how it comes on the clouds, metaphors. But these are biblical, theological, so they're, they're, that's what it says. Okay. 
Now we're going to ask the question, when? When does God's wrath come? <coughs> it comes, or it came, we do, we do two things here, and we can do future. God's wrath came, God's wrath comes, and God's wrath will always come. Okay, we Past, present, future. Okay, Because mm -hmm. two seconds just went by, and that hasn't changed anything. So it's still past, present, and future. So God's wrath came, and God's wrath comes when there was or is what? Excessive, Excessive sin. sin. There's another point here, I think, right? Because the repeated attempts for repentance that didn't happen. So God always gave multiple choices for repentance. When that didn't come, so he had, he had a time, you know, he, obviously he knew when that would come. He knew what people of Israel, I'm thinking the Old Testament, so the, the repeated attempts of the prophets, God through the prophets, to call them to repentance. Amazing thing about that, I mean, you know, hundreds of years went by from the time coming in the land of Canaan until the northern and southern kingdoms were taken to captivity. Yeah. Seven, eight hundred years. Yeah. So it shows God's patience and wanting people to repent, come to him, so he, he wouldn't have to demonstrate his wrath. Yeah. God is so patient. And sometimes I don't like that. I don't like him to be patient. I want, I want justice. I want judgment. No. <clears throat> Until right. when it comes to your own sin, excessive sin. Right, but I think it is also when it get, you get so debased in your in your actions. Right. I mean, you know, like right now, I think the biggest change is we're, we're messing with gender. We, we 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 don't acknowledge that God created the color of our skin, the color of our hair, the length of our days, and we think we can control it all. And now I can be a man if I want to be a man, or I can be a woman if I want. You know? well, mm -hmm. I think we're wise to pray for God to be patient. Mm -hmm. Because we are in some deep weeds deep here. Weeds. Deep weeds, right? When you start advocating that kind of stuff, when God clearly says, oh, I, What, are you kidding me? Yeah. You kidding? Because you're kidding we're spitting in his face. So when does God come? When? When he's, he's had, had enough. enough. <laughs> Just like you. Have you ever gotten to a point that I've had enough? You're right. Have you ever had a student in class where you said, I've had enough with this little kid? <laughs> Have you ever had one that you, you said, I can't take him anymore? Have you had one like that? No. You've never <laughs> had one. I mean, she can say. I wasn't in class. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Has anyone ever had to the point you said, I'm done? Yeah. Done? You ever? I did, yeah. Very Tommy? Oh, yeah. yeah I, I, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. finished. I'm done. I'm done. It's the same with God. The checkbook is closed. <laughs> <laughs> he, he is very patient. And when and Tommy, I'm, I'm presuming with whatever the topic is that you're talking about, you were done with, you gave it enough time. Oh, yeah. You gave it time. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying here. I'm, 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 I'm really trying here. I'm, I guess, I'm done now. I've tried. Mm -mm. Is that what it was like for you? Yeah, it's what it's like. I think of the passage when God says, uh, or Jesus <clears throat> said, uh, don't throw your pearls to swine. And I'm always stuck with that because I always feel like, oh, i got to be so loving and so caring and i gotta, I got to be patient and sh wait, 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 wait. And then I think of the passage, don't throw your pearls to swine. Well, how long does it take me to figure out that this is a swine? I don't know. I haven't I figured that I, one out yet. <laughs> I, 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 right. So, when, when God has had enough, it could be like you just uh, who said seven hundred years, or uh, it, it can be a, a long time. It can be a short time. Okay. Sodom and Gomorrah. That was a relatively short time. You you start you read about it, and then all of a sudden, boom, God. God was quick to that when that came up, you know. Hey, Rick, because she had mentioned abortion earlier, I I looked this up, and this I'm not saying this is the only time that would either trigger or cause us His wrath to come, but His wrath has always come, at least what I can tell from from studying, within a generation of when the children start getting murdered. So, with Moses, 
That's when they were ordered to start drowning the babies. Yep, yep. Within that generation, that's when God's judgment came with Israel. Before they went into captivity, it was Hezekiah's kid that started passing, passed his own son through the fire of the, the god Moloch. Good, when good. Uh, Herod killed all the, the toddlers, that within one generation, that was when, so it's always within one, and we're about a generation in right now, going, you know, going back to, to, to Roe. Yeah. And it's not just here. I, 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 I was stunned when I heard this just a couple months ago. Do you know that as of right now, Israel has executed more Jews than Hitler did during the Holocaust through abortion? Mm. Israel, Israel has, has executed more Jewish children through abortion. through abortion than Hitler murdered Jews in the Holocaust. Wow, that's profound. That that's is really something. Ago. I just heard that like a month ago. Most, wow. no civilization has ever lasted because it's children. And, and every single time that that's happened scripturally, I think it's. It's always Satan's influence to stop the deliverer from coming. Moses was the deliverer. Jesus was the deliverer. You know, whoever the deliverer, you know, would have been during Hezekiah's time or whatever. But it's always, it seems to always be to stop a deliverer from coming. It's like Satan's trying to thwart God's plan. About right. He does it through. Whatever that deliverer may look like. Yeah. Wow, your insight on that. Within one generation, that's really big. I I had never thought about that. I had never. You taught me something tonight. I had, I didn't know that. Lawrence, what's a generation? Well, I mean, the economy was thought it was twenty years. Uh, it was forty years. 40 years. Well, that's what I'm saying. But then, uh, uh, children. Yeah, children, um, children, children. I've been reading. Th I've, oh, I've, right. I started with the beginning of the year. Started reading from Genesis one, reading through the Bible again. And there's multiple verses where it, it talks about, especially like in the Psalms and stuff, where it talks about a generation could be 70 or even, he goes, he goes, I give you 70 years and 80 three is a blessing. Three and four generations, three and four generations. Yeah, so oh, it's four score, is it? What is that? Well, that's, that's the age, four score. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if that's the right way to approach a generation, but. Yeah, because the iniquity and the sin is passed on, right? The four, to, uh, Four generations, so four generations, eight years. Okay, when God's wrath came and comes as a consequence for heinousness, just mm -hmm. blatant, yes, disgusting, right? That's why this thing that we have going now with the Supreme Court, this is a real pivotal point to time. This is this is a, a turnaround time. And I know pro-life people have been praying a long time for this. That, yeah. Well, this has been going on 20 years. What was 73. 73 is past 70 years. 50. Yeah, 50 40, years. It's 49 years, 73. Been going a long time. 72. We're going to be the year of Jubilee coming up. Yeah. And that the, the Supreme Court is now turning around. That is a, a, a sign of repentance. Mm -hmm. I pray. It's a sign of repentance, right? And, and maybe it won't pass, but there are a lot of people who have repented for this, right? And have been doing it for a long, for 50 years, yep. fighting this. And so now we see maybe God's wrath withheld. Maybe. 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 So God could say, like, like, like Lawrence, like what you just said, if it comes on one generation, well, it's 50 years. Well, we're close to one generation, aren't we? I mean, it depends on what generation. Depends on what, right. I, I like yeah. Brian's Jubilee. Jubilee. Is there a 50 years Jubilee? <laughs> so for, that'd be cool. No, but I, I, do, I do believe that it is a very pivotal time. Mm -hmm. and, it, and if the uh, Supreme Court says that abortion is a legal right in our nation. I think that's certainly, but the, the gender situation and all of that too, I, mean that, I think that's mm -hmm. a big part of it too as well. It, it is. But the abortion I think is, is key, yeah. Yeah. absolutely key. But you know, that, so they were heinous. shouting, right, to Molech, you know, come save us, Molech. There, there's no way Molech is gonna save you. 
Well, I mean, our society has become as rabid about it as Sodom and Gomorrah was. Yes. Yep. It, and God said in Romans 1, he said, he actually says, I desire to be known as the creator. And he goes, and because you have, you stop recognizing me as that, and then he lists all this stuff, he goes, I'm going to give you over. That actually is the, I mean, we're, we're dealing with the judgment of evolution. We're being judged for it. That's what, that's what, at least that's my understanding. I could yeah. be wrong. That's no, my understanding of Romans 1, but no. I, I think that's what we're dealing with now with uh, this rabid homosexuality and transgenderism and, all the, and abortion and all this stuff. What came first? Evolution. About 150 years ago is when they started introducing that. And, it, and yep, think sure. about that. As evolution has gotten more and more of a foothold, then we had the sexual revolution. Yeah. And then it just not. And now it's just you can't even, you know, taking prayer out of school and everything else. So God's wrath came and comes as a consequence for heinousness. I, I, could, I couldn't pick out a word. I just That was the best word I could come up with anymore. Do you have another word, David? No, that's a good word. No, I think it's a good word, too. It's, it's, just, it's just gross. I, I, I had gross up there to begin with, and that it doesn't work, so I picked the word heinous. And stuff. But what's another word for heinous? Somebody. Disgusting. Disgusting. Vile. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Rebellion. Godlessness, wickedness, stubbornness, stubbornness. Stubbornness, <laughs> unrepentant, stubborn. I'm stubborn with my repentance. I don't want to repent. I didn't sin. I didn't steal a piece of candy. I did, but I don't. I did steal a candy. I didn't steal that candy, you know, because I'm stubborn. Well, I, don't, I was I don't owed want to that candy. I was owed that candy. After all, that's right. I'm not. I have to pay for it. I work here, so I'm just going to my. put some in my pocket. All right. That unrepentance, the stubbornness, and rejection of uh, Jesus. And the Creator. Now, See, rejection of Creator God. This is why I bring up the point all the time I bring it to you. What happened in 70 AD? The destruction of that beautiful temple that Don puts the pictures up, the beautiful temple. It was so gorgeous and gold, and it was all destroyed. There was a judgment on the Jews, on the temple, on the temple system, on the high priest, the guys who, who slaughtered Jesus, the Romans, the Jews, the the Epiphanies, Antiochus Epiphanies, the the, the 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 desolation of tribulation or desolation of abomination, the desolation of abominations, all that stuff was going on. And what did God do? I'm taking Jerusalem as pretty as you are. I'm, I'm done with you. And Jesus said, "You'll see me coming again on a white cloud." Whoa, whoa. Uh, we can't get into that. I'm not going to get into the <laughs> eschatology here. I'm not going to get into that with you guys, okay? I'm not going to get into it. But there was a judgment that came upon the temple of Jerusalem because the guys who ran the temple, they were in cahoots with the Romans. Everybody was paying off everybody, the government, and the, it was just a mess, right? The Herodians and all. And finally, they crucified Jesus. 70 years later, or not 70, Jesus died around 33. And about 30 years later, 40 years later, the temple was destroyed. You don't think that had something to do with the slaughter of Jesus, with the crucifixion of Jesus? You don't think God said, hey. And you don't think Paul said, whoa, I should have had a V8. Paul, Paul stood there and wanted to kill all these Christians. Paul was one who said, ah, Kill them all. And then Paul goes to Damascus. Yep. Poof. And he gets, oh, gee, I guess I may have been wrong. I was a hotshot Pharisee at the temple. I was one of the, I was on the Sanhedrin. I was on the leadership team. I was one of the boys. I was a big time. I, I, knew, I knew my scriptures. Too. I knew my Old Testament. I knew the scriptures. I was a Pharisee, and I knew the scriptures. And I missed the Messiah? How can? Huh. Ooh, should have had a B8, right? So Paul realized, and I'm sure that three years in, he spent in the desert, what do you think he did? I think he repented. Yes. I, think, <laughs> I think that was a three years of agony, like, oh, man, I'm so sorry. Okay? So. When? 
when you pass the point of God's mercy. God says, I'm done. Here comes the judgment. You, you got a nice temple there. Thanks for all the cows and pigs and doves you sacrificed and slaughtered there. It was nice. It's a sweet aroma. I enjoyed it. But now you abuse it. Now your, your sacrifices mean nothing to me because I sent you. I sent you the Messiah. I sent you Jesus. I sent you God incarnate. I sent you myself and my son. And I sent him to you. And you, and you, you rejected him. You know, Rick, what, what I find interesting, you know, people struggle a lot. Well, how can be a God of God of love and God of wrath? I've never struggled. Maybe it's just God's mercy on me, but he has to act in character. He, his attributes, because of who he is, he acts in, in those things. So it, it's, it's this dichotomy. It's, it's this full-orbed aspect of his attributes that are demonstrated in different ways. There, there's no inconsistency with that. He is a God of love, but he's a God of wrath as well. That's why we need a savior. Yeah. So it's never, you know, people, well, then, people struggle with that again, a lot. Right? Why do we need a savior? God's Because we're God's sinners, wrath. but we, we, deserve, we, we deserve death. No, 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 I'm coming to that. I'm, I'm, Brian just opened my door. So you, you, I'm coming to what he just opened up. We, we, we have to have a savior to avoid God's wrath. So I'm going to bring up two words, propitiation and expiation. You've probably heard it before. You don't have a clue what they mean, do you? <laughs> not, you have you ever heard of propitiation? Have you heard that word? Yeah. God propitiated our... Do you know what it means? Not a clue. It means uh, satisfied. Satisfied. Paid for. I'm going to show you because you're right, but there's two sides. Um, Carol, are you know with that thing there? Would you pass it around? Is that pass? Is that made itself around? Yeah. I don't know if they got down there. What is that? That's okay. what. The, that's what they. Eat. I'm going. To, I want everybody. What is it? I want everybody to don't put this in your hands, look at it, see what's inside, and then pass it on. Okay. We, we, we saw it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Look, take it out. You mean? No, no. Don't. Do not open it. <laughs> do not open this. Got it. Do not open it. Do not. That's right. <laughs> Are we going to incur the wrath of Rick? <laughs> yeah, right. You know what's that maybe like when you you know, One more time. That's it. Hey, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Turn it upside down, Ron. Mix it so you can see this. Okay. So we know when. So we know where does God come from? Well, God comes down. We know how he comes. How does he come? On the clouds. On the clouds. We know when does he come? When his you mercy ask. has he, he's done with it. Yeah. Okay? Now, there's a reason why I showed you the soldiers. Okay? Because here is examples. Amos 8, the judgment of the northern kingdom happened in December. And so it goes, this is early, and this gets closer to all. In 722, the judgment of the northern kingdom, it was Assyria who went in and took over the northern kingdom. So Assyria goes in with their soldiers, takes over the northern kingdom, and God says, I'm done with you, northern kingdom. You, you, I, I'm not interested anymore. Isaiah 33, the judgment of Edom, it was late 16th century, and Judah was the ones who went in and attacked Edom. The judgment of Nineveh, Happened in 612 BC. It was many nations destroyed at Nineveh. Many nations, not just one. The Syrians, the Babylonians, everybody went in there and was just knocked out everything. So they must have been pretty bad, those people. Judgment of Egypt in 568 was Babylon. Judgment of Judah, 586, Babylon. Judgment of Babylon. Um, that's wrong. I, I made a mistake here somewhere. It's not Babylon. I think this is. Um, Persia. This Persia. this should be Persia here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that this should be Persia. My mistake, my mistake. Oof. Hate that when that happens. Okay? So we can see that that there's always a military involved. There's always an army involved with God's judgment. Always an army. There's something, there's some size. Always somebody shooting somebody, whether an arrow or a gun or something. And somebody's got guys and women, and, they, and there's war going on. Okay. 
judgments always come on two entities, on people and nations. It comes on people and the nations. So when they, when, I'll go to AD 70 because I kind of enjoy that one. When AD 70, when Jerusalem was attacked, millions of Jews died. I think, I think they, they said that it was like a massive, worse than, every, worse than anything. I think more than, I, I think more than the, the uh, Holocaust, I think, in, in AD 70. Okay, it was a mess, and they were eating. It was so bad, the women were eating their babies. That's how bad it was in Jerusalem. So if you've ever read Josephus, and he explains how horrible the, the 70, how it was when you read Josephus, he explains that, wow, it's a pretty big mess. It was ugly, disgusting. The, the destruction of Jerusalem, what the Jews did to themselves, what the Romans did to them, it was just, just horrible. Okay. So we have a judgment of people and nations. There's always people and nations. And when he's got mercy, ran or runs out. And so here's an old army, and here's a new one. This has not stopped. Didn't, didn't the God, way that God does this. Did, didn't God judge too by famines and that kind of thing? Yeah. 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 He, did, he, did. Yeah, he so does it too, yeah. Okay. I'm going to make sure that. That's true. Okay. So. So Why did and does God's wrath come? Why is it? Well, it, it's heinous sin. And I think this abortion thing is a, is a, it's a good thing to look at right now because it's, I think we avoided it some, if it passes. I don't know if it's going to pass. But I think we avoided a, a wrath of God. Right. But, abortion, so. but abortion and the sexual revolution, yeah. it turned around and it said, what, what is the covenant of marriage? You don't need that anymore. What is this? What is that? It's, it has oh, wow, eroded every single yeah. basis that's that good. it that's has good. truth. So, a, a couple minutes ago, I was on my phone. I was trying to find the verse, and I can't find it. There's a, there, it occurs in Exodus, but it doesn't say it the same way. I think it's in Deuteronomy, but I can't find it. And God actually says through Moses, he said, if you cause a woman to miscarriage, that, that's just the word they use, but... It, but if you read it, it at the context is with intent. intent. He uses he uses a legal term we still use today. He said, "You will not be acquitted." Right. I can't. I, I was trying to find. Wow. I can't find it. <laughs> what is this coming on the clouds? Judgment. What? What is? What is that? This coming on the cloud. What is that? <clears throat> well, it's the same prophetic language. In every every place of scripture you see this, it's always shaking, darkening comes from above. There's every place you see that Babylon goes in or Assyria goes in or Judah, every time it's a shaking and a darkening. It's done in the same way. On the clouds. Every, every destruction of a nation, every time it's done, that's how it's done. Same purpose. Judging. God is judging and saying, that I'm I'm done with you. I made a mistake. Same accomplishment, destruction of the people or nation, same thing. Judgment on the people, and then destruction. Judgment's first, and then comes the destruction. You did wrong, now comes the penalty. <clears throat> and the same instrument, yeah. how was it done? How, how was all this, uh, how is this done? It, to me, this is the important one. It's always been a part of Always. That it's always so Biblically. many warnings and telling you, and you, 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 you're not going back to the Bible and the truth of God's word, and you eliminate him from your This community. is where you, you should read the prophets. The, the five major prophets, help me out, I, somebody help me, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, 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 Ezekiel, Ezekiel, Ezekiel Daniel. Daniel. I, but then you got the small ones, Habakkuk, and get yourself a good Bible, and they'll tell you who they are prophesying to. The, who, the nations yeah. are, are here's where I'm prophesying to. Why? Because you screwed up. You guys are yeah. disgusting. So a, a prophet always comes in and says, here's what's going to happen if you don't change your ways. Yep. And either they listen to the prophet or they don't. That's why the Old Testament is so, is so beautiful. When you, when you can read it in context, when you get yourself a good Bible that explains what you're about to read is okay. Here's the here. This is um, this is a prophecy on Israel. Is a prophecy on the Northern Kingdom. Is a prophecy on Assyria. Okay, and then you could just read that. Oh, this is what it was. Okay, so 
we see this and coming on the cl the clouds are always involved in all of them. All of them have cloud involvement. Real, real quick, just you know, we're we're <laughs> facing food shortage shortages and stuff, and there's famines and stuff going on. We're probably going to end up with some form of that here, and uh, it, it, it it chronologically it lines up scripturally because w whenever there's a famine for food, especially among God's people, it always started with a famine for the true word of God first. And we've had decades of the prosperity gospel and the you know all this nonsense and stuff. So there's already been a famine for the word for a long time, and then a, f a famine for food always follows it uh, biblically. And that's what's the, actually on the horizon next for us. Okay, well, I was just thinking again. Um, so if wrath comes the same way all the time, earlier this evening you said, where does it come from? So, if the good Lord God resides in heaven, doesn't wrath come from heaven? Yeah. That's okay. Uh, yeah. So, it comes from heaven. It comes the same way on the clouds. There you go. I just wanted to straighten that it's out. Coming. It's coming from heaven. It's coming from I get it. And, and we know heaven is where? Here on earth. Ooh. Ooh. Heaven is on, in the permanent. Permanent. Huh? Ooh. We won't open that can of worms right now. Okay. We'll let that one go. Thank you. Okay, so we know God. It comes. God's wrath comes down, comes on the clouds, and it comes when there's excessive sin. I want to make a point though about the armies because the armies is you know if it's always an army, those are evil people generally speaking. Other yeah, than if right. you want to argue the Christian but. Crusades, which you can argue they're the same people anyways, but could it's a great argument for God creating evil. It's not, it's not the believers doing that, right? Love your neighbor is not going over there and smashing her and taking her stuff. So it's, it's evil on evil. And I, Rick, I think I've heard you say it before, evil ends up destroying itself. Yeah. It cannot sustain itself. Yeah, it can't sustain itself. Right. God also calls him his servant. His servant. Yeah. <laughs> think about that. Yeah. These, these evil empires, essentially, right? Ron? Yeah. So Jesus said, Every knee will bow. <laughs> you will see me coming on. You will see me. This generation will not pass away until you see me. You will. You will. Now, take care for the word see, because he's not talking necessarily a physical see, because has anyone seen God? No. He turned his face to Moses. Even Moses didn't, get to see, didn't see the face of God. Right? And who does Jesus say God is? God is what? God. Spirit. 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 God is spirit. All right? So you see that when Jesus said, then will appear in heaven a sign of the Son of Man, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. Now everybody said, oh, all. Oh. They couldn't all because America wasn't here yet. Neither was There's Ecuador or right. Brazil or China. They only knew what was, they didn't even know what was past the Mediterranean Sea, right? Didn't mean it wasn't there. Thank you. Didn't mean it wasn't there. All the tribes of the earth will mourn. Well, in context, he's talking about all the tribes that we know of on the earth as far as we know of. And we know that that really ends at Spain because nobody goes beyond Spain. You know, uh, maybe Paul's going to make, make it there. And, and nobody goes too far. We went to the east, and we came to China, and then we ran into this big thing called the Pacific Ocean. So <laughs> there's nothing beyond that, right? Until 1400s, until the 1400s. Okay, so they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. It's the same words as in the Old Testament. It's no different. Except it does not say dark clouds. Yeah, no dark but to the clouds. Dark okay. water. So we know that there is a judgment that had that happened in 70 AD. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, I'm there. I am I'm there. You'll see it. Now we talked about theophanies. We also talked about theophanies. Can Jesus manifest himself right now? Can yes. he do that? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, he can. 
you want to sue, you can. But if I don't believe that he can, then he doesn't exist. Th there's no difference. So you have to believe that Jesus can do whatever he wants. God can do whatever he wants. And that's where we talk about the sovereignty. God can do whatever he wants. So for me personally, when I hear John MacArthur say, no, 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 it doesn't continue. I, I kind of think John MacArthur is a little bit arrogant to be able to tell, tell God what God can and cannot do. <clears throat> God can't perform any miracles. And you know, God can't. No, no, no. God can't do that. No, no. We know that that time period. Of, so God can't do that. Ooh. When you start telling me that God can't do something, I got a problem. I got a problem. And that's a man perspective. That's a man's perspective. You know, Especially when it can appear to be anti-biblical. He doesn't have any grounds for saying that biblically. That's what bugs the heck out of me. Yeah. 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 And he's so sure of himself, which <laughs> also bugs me. Yeah. yeah. Because it is an arrogance. Yep. Yeah. We, we have to agree to the fact that we can be wrong. Humility. We can be wrong. Incidentally, I can be wrong tonight. You know that, don't you? But well, you got that. that. I, I <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. So now you have been now you've been exposed to a biblical theology, a biblical theological study of God's wrath. Where's God's wrath come from? What? Where? Uh, uh, heaven. How does God's wrath come? Uh, when does God's wrath come? And why does God's wrath come? To clean things out. I'm cleaning out. Change the thing. The age has ended for you, Assyria. The age has ended for you, Nineveh. The age, your age of your age. I'm bringing this to an end. I'm done. I'm bringing this army in, and your time period is over. Hitler had a time period where it was looking, looking pretty good. But God used a foreign army of, of the United States, maybe some of your fathers or grandfathers fought in those wars. Mine did. Okay? And so God used that army to do what? To destroy Hitler's army. But for a time period, it looked like Hitler was doing pretty good for himself. Looking pretty good. But then what did God do? God raised an army. Okay? And we had cooperation from the, Rus the Russians, right? And God raised an army. And then when that war was over, I can't say we and the Russians really got together. Could we say that? And then not so much, can we? You're out there, can we say that? Uh-uh, we can't say that. All right. So, so God raised that up. So God's wrath continues today n no different, right? Now we're going to go to something different, because now I'm going to show you the last part of this presentation. And I want you to, to me, this part is what I want you to know. Okay, what did, what did you see? What is this? The Ark of the Covenant. What's in here? Corn. Yeah, there's a staff in here. Aaron's staff in here. And the popcorn is the, the mantle. And the sheets of paper, there's two of them in there, and those are the tablets, okay? Those are Moses' tablets. So you had the Ark of the Covenant in your hands, okay? Well, let's not go too far here because we don't want to get struck dead because we, we, it's just an example. Just an example. Um, now, I don't want to open this because you don't want to open up the Ark because the Ark is where God would talk with Moses. Yeah, they can, do you know the passage, Brian? I, I don't know where it is, but... I've seen Lawrence. Indiana Jones. Where? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Indiana Jones. Uh, okay. So we have the Ark of the Covenant Exodus here. Exodus 25, 22, Numbers 7, 8, 9, 1 Samuel 4, 4, God, Isaiah well, 37, up, 16, Ooh. and Psalm 80, <laughs> verse this 1. Is, what these are the were what? That's, God's, that's when God spoke to Moses. Okay. Between the two chairmen. Chairman. Okay. On the Ark's <clears throat> Covenant. So, this was built, and it was carried. It was carried on poles by special guys. Yep. You had to be holy, and there was one guy who reached up and touched it. What was his name? I forget his he name. Was tipping. He to stop the tipping. It was tipping. What was the guy? Uh, he died. Yep. Instant. Um, what's his name? That was a, it. Was, it was on a cart. It was at the time of David, wasn't it? Right. I don't remember. Uriah. Uriah. No. 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 no, no, no. no. Uriah. Um, we're bringing. It's what? 
Who, who was the guy who put his hand on the ark and, and was killed instantly? Phineas, 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 Phineas. What? No. I don't. They find that. Would you find that? Uzzah. It was Uzzah. Uzzah. U-Z-Z-A-H. U-Z-Z-A. Okay. Uzzah. All right. So here we go. You have to understand what this mercy seat is. So, understand the mercy on the Ark of the Covenant. You have to understand, here's the Ark. Container of the Ark, which I just showed you, are the tablets and the staff and the, and the, the, manna. the manna. Okay? The cherubim were up on top. And the mercy seat is this thing. The mercy seat sits on top of the Ark, and it covers the Ark. That mercy seat is Jesus. And we get that from Hebrews. And the Greek word is hilas, hilasman. Okay? But that Greek word has been translated many different ways in all these Bibles. Many different ways. And so we get different interpretations because people don't like to think of God as wrathful. Ah, I know God is love. Don't tell me God is wrathful. And so we make our Bibles not translate that word like it's supposed to be translated. We're going to make it something softer. Okay, That's why you can trust your Bibles, but when you do a Bible study, be very careful. Very careful. Because you can come up with some, some bad theology, some bad beliefs that aren't, aren't what that, aren't, they're not, that's the wrong belief. And you get those from some of these Bibles that miss some of these words. That's why it's so important to do Bible studies through a literal one. Okay? So, so now, you see what the ark is? Got it? Now watch closely. These are some of the words that have been translated a last month. And somebody look at 1 June 4.10. Somebody look that up. 1 June, John, 1 John 4.10. Would somebody get that passage name? 1 John 4.10. Okay. We often hear propitiation. You've heard that word. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll hear expiation. Sometimes you'll see appeasement. Maybe atonement. A covering. Maybe a ransom. Maybe a substitution. Maybe, oh, this, are we just going to include the mercy seat? Is the Ark of the Covenant? Oh, we call it the mercy seat. Oh, maybe it's a payment, a payoff, a redeem, a replace, a sacrifice. So these words are often used in, in to translate that in last month. Or you'll hear a pastor say, oh yeah, Jesus, he redeemed you. Mm -hmm. So we think you've been redeemed. Okay, read it, Dave. Here it is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. What's the translation? What, what, what kind of Bible? <clears throat> uh, it's a New King James Code. New King James, okay. New King James uses the word propitiation. So here we see the mercy seat, okay? And here we see the, 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 the books inside there, the, and you can't see here. But you see that little red th thing there? That's the blood of Jesus. So Jesus is the mercy seat. Got it? He's the mercy seat. He is this, and he is covering what's inside there. And you don't want what's inside there, who is metaphorically God, you don't want his wrath getting out of there. <laughs> you, want that, you want that mercy seat on top of there, nice and tight and nice and close. Okay? You, don't want, you don't want God's wrath coming out. And, and it, you know, Uzzah, what's the guy? Uzzah touched the thing. J just because he touched it, it, was, it killed him, right? So what's inside of this ark is pretty special, okay? Now, we know physically it's Aaron's rod and, and the, the, the Ten Commandments and some of the manna, but that, those are just physical things. We know that inside of here is, ooh, some of the wrath of God. Oh, or the wrath of God's inside here. So, what, what scripture is that, Rick? This says the wrath of God in, is inside. It doesn't say it's inside. Okay, it doesn't say. It. We're, I, we're, yeah, we're, I've, we're never taking, heard, I've never heard that before. We're, we're taking that when Uza, we know that what was inside of here was not to be messed with. Okay, so when Moses was or when David was carrying carrying it, and he said, "Put on special poles," and he tilted, it, David said, "Hold it, let the ark sit there until I figure out how to do it." And then he, David went and got special guys and put holes through the rings 
and said, and they carried it that way because they did have it, I think, on a cart, didn't they, at one time? They had a cart. And God said, no, that's not how I want you to carry this thing. And so whatever is inside of this, I don't know what's inside of it, but it's not to be messed with, right? Because there's something special in here. I don't know. I'd like to know if the ark is still available today. How many think it's, how many think it's, Somewhere. It's somewhere. It's somewhere here on Earth. It's somewhere here on Earth. Okay. In the firmament. In the firmament. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, really that, that is Christ, you know, and when I stand in Judgment Day, right, you, you pray that Jesus is there to protect you from not God's wrath, but my unsinfulness. My rebellion, okay. my right. So you're, you're gonna. I'm, I'm gonna get to that. Okay. Get to, I want right, you sorry. to remember these two words and what they mean. Okay. So here we have. In this is love. In to to in this esteem is the agape. Agape the love, not um, from yourself. Um, mm -hmm. Love, love agape. Loved past agape is past tense. God. The, the God, uh, they say on God, but uh, and uh, agape, emas kai, apestelein, tan kuyan, the son of Elasman. Propitiation is what this translation said. But this word has received love. This word, er near tone is of us, of. Uh, hamarti, ham, the sins of us. The sins, hamar, you see, marti, ha, uh, ham, hamartology, hamar, hamarta, hamartia, sin of us. Okay? So, this passage has been uh, sometimes mistranslated, but it's okay. You, you understand it now. Watch close. Rick, Rick, all of those words was translated from that one Greek word. All the ones you put up prior. All yeah, words. yeah. And these men, uh, on these, these were all at one yeah, time. Well, I, I'm not saying they, they were in Bibles, okay? But I've heard pastors say, well, here's what it means, oh, mercy seat. It means the Ark of the Covenant. It means the covenant. Oh, you've been redeemed, son. You've been redeemed. It's a, and we but, hear but, that. But ransom and substitution has different Greek words. Different, different, oh. uh, different words. They're different Greek words. Right. But so I'm just are. saying that when, when a lot of people talk about this, they use that elasmon, and they, they won't say propitiation because people don't understand propitiation. It's a hard word. <laughs> oh, well, let's use expiation. I don't understand that one either. What's a word you don't understand? Atonement. I get that one. Oh, ransom. I, I get that one. Oh, redeemed. I understand that. Oh, mercy seat. Oh, yeah. Jesus paid for my, I understand pay for my, you, you see? So when we hear this word propitiation, it's kind of a word that scares most of us, okay? But I'm going to make it very easy for you to understand what elasman means, okay? So watch this, okay? Susan? For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. But because of your hard and impenitent heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath when God's righteousness, judgment, righteous judgment will be revealed. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life. But wrath of God remains on him. Got it? Okay. Okay, now I'm going to explain for you very easily this seat, okay? You, you, now you know there's a top to the seat, right? So nothing, I can't get in here. I, I can't get in there. If I want to get in there, I got to undo it. And I got to get in there, I got I to get, get in there. So something is keeping me from getting, I can't, I'm going to cut a hole. I, I want to get in there, okay? But there's something in here too that wants to get out. Okay? So the mercy seat has a top to the mercy seat and a bottom to the mercy seat. Has a top and a bottom. And they both do something. The top part prevents my sin 
my sin from getting into God. It prevents my sin that I've sinned getting to God because God is holy and who's not? Rick is not. <laughs> so some, this mercy seat stops my sin from getting in. Jesus did that. Jesus takes my sin, takes my sin, and prevents it from getting to God. He's ransomed me. He's paid for my sins. He's He's expiated. He's expiated. He, he's appeased. He's atoned for. He's covered. He's covered. He's replaced. He's paid. He, he has stopped my sin, and I got a lot of them, and I'm trying to break in there to a holy God. But there's another way to look at it. Because not only do I have to worry about my sin getting in, what do I have to worry about getting out? The what? His wrath. The wrath of God. The wrath of God is in here. Ask Uzzah, he'll tell you. Okay? The wrath of God is in here, metaphorically, right? And so the wrath of God can get out. And Jesus is keeping God's wrath away from us. So he has propitiated <clears throat> us. So the mercy seat is both a propitiation and an expiation both. The the second church that I pastored, I was meeting with the deacons, and uh, a great, wonderful guy uh, was on my ordination team, and he said, hey, Rick, glad to have you. Um, I want you to read this passage. What is it? He said, well, are you a propitiation guy or are you an expiation guy? <laughs> oh, he knew his stuff. I didn't know so much. I thought I did, but... I, I realized, oh man, I'm, he was an elder, deacon, okay. and I'm going, oh, this guy knows. I'm so I said, I, I, I answered it, I said, well, it's, it's, it is propitiation, it is propitiation. He said, that's good, okay. But I said, well, there's something about my sin, because I don't want God's wrath to get out. So here's your answer, Here, here's your answer, here's your answer. Out of, out expiated, stops our sins from reaching God. So I prevent God's sin. He took, or take God, Jesus takes our sins. He's expiated. He's on top of the, and he stops my sin from getting in to, into the ark. The mercy seat also stops God's wrath from reaching us. So he took or takes God's wrath. So Jesus both did two things. He took our sin. And he took God's wrath. And that is why you love the wrath of God. That is why you love Jesus. That is why Jesus is so awesome. What a, what a cheap word. <laughs> right? But you see that, that Jesus is, has both, as that mercy he, he sat on top of there. Now, I'm just explaining to you what it is. We Don't take this stuff literal because all of this is metaphorical, right? And I wish we could find the ark today because I'd like to open it up and see what happens. Right. Maybe. <laughs> well, they do that in the maybe, so maybe, maybe, I would, maybe I wouldn't want to do that. Laura, Laura, already seen Laura's what happens. Have seen the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's not good. Cool. Okay. Now, do you understand that? Okay. The two things, propitiation and expiation. We have to be concerned with God's wrath getting out to us and, and, and destroying us because he destroys a lot of people on the clouds. I mean, we know that. Are you getting and we got to worry about our sin getting in. Who is Jesus who covers that? Jesus is, he stops our sin getting in, and he stops the wrath coming up. And that's why we love him on that mercy seat. we I got to have him there. Because my sin can't, God will not want my sin getting into him. And I certainly don't want God's wrath getting out to me. And that's why this is a really good example. Okay, so, so you see what that is? Okay. So the mercy seat has a top and a bottom. It's, it's a top and a bottom, and the top part is covered by the cherubim, okay, which are the angels of the, the cherubim. Okay, I don't. Brian, you want to say something? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Dave. Six way creature. You got anything? The, um, I have to look up the name of it. There, I used to have a, a DVD 
It's called um, Exodus Revealed or Unveiled, one of the two. Unveiled. It is fantastic. Um, I can't. I can't even pronounce the guy's name. He's a, he's a biblical archaeologist, but he just goes through and he, he spends some time talking about uh, talking about this. It's actually really cool. So here's the mercy seat. The last mass comes from 1 John 2, 2, 1 John 4, 10, Hebrews 4, 10, and Numbers. Propitiation is a cover over, expiation, appeasement, atone for, right? But you're just just don't don't get all jumbled up in all the words. Just know that you got a, the mercy seat stops my sin from getting in. It stops God's wrath from coming out. It's very simple. The two words are expiation and propitiation. Very simple. It's just what's... This mercy seat is a big deal. So okay? like propitiation would be like to protect, and expiation would be like exit. Yeah. Okay. So my question to you, beloved, you beloved people. I love you, the wrath of God. Yeah. You see now why you should love the wrath of God? Because ultimately, you want everything atoned for. You've been <clears throat> sinned against. You've sinned. Okay? But it's been evil. You want to see justice happen. Yeah, you want to right. see that happen. You want to see that happen. Right. And if you don't have the wrath of God, <laughs> then you, you don't have it. You, you have nothing happening. Right? And I don't want to get into hell. Right? I, don't, I mean, I don't want to talk about hell now and all that. that uh, that's, a, that's, a whole, that's a whole other ball of worms, right? This is a thing. But what does Jesus have to do with the wrath of God? He's the mercy seat. He's the propitiation and the expiation. Okay. You don't Got it? Get, you don't want to get into hell, but what, when Christ died on the cross, where did he go? Oh, he went. Yeah, he went to the to, to release the prisoners. I, that, that's a whole other thing. Okay. Okay. So, what does Jesus have to do with the wrath of God? There it is. And so, what should you be happy about? You should be happy about the wrath of God, but don't tell it to your friends because they won't understand you. That they'll think you're some kind of nutcase. Okay. <laughs> I so think, you, you have to think, <laughs> you have to think, use your mind. Wrath of God is holy and purposeful. It has a reason. I love the wrath of God. And what does that make me do? It makes me really love Jesus. <clears throat> really, I really, oh man, whoa. Oh Jesus, thank you so much for keeping that wrath away from me. Oh, and thank you for stopping my sin from getting in my sins. Were, you heard pastor say, your sins were on that cross. You hear, hear pastors say that? Your sins were on that cross. Well, they're talking about your sins getting in. But he's not talking about the wrath of God getting out. Most pastors won't talk about the wrath getting out. They just want to talk about your sins. Your sins were on the, nailed to the cross with Jesus. You ever heard that pastor preach that? Your sins were on the cross with Jesus. You have to, what about the wrath that gets out? You don't hear that. Talk to people here. Most churches. You won't. Because our culture has been raised on God is love. God is love. And Rich, you might remember me talking about the hatred of God, mm -hmm. that God hates. We, we had, we've had a discussion on that. Maybe I'll do a lesson on the hatred of God. What does the word hatred mean? What does, when God hates, you know, and he tells you to hate too. He yeah. tells you to hate. So it, the word hatred can't mean a, a bad thing, like, you know, really gory hatred thing. It has to mean something else. It has to be something else. But we'll get into that later. So, here are the answers. Where's wrath come from? Above. Above. How? It comes as clouds. When? The mercy runs out. Why? I'm going to judge the people. I'm going to judge it for what you've done. Who's in the mercy seat? Jesus is the mercy seat. And what's he do? He stops God's wrath from giving me, and he stops my sin from getting to God. That's it. That's all I got for you. You understand the wrath of God now? So how many comings of Christ? Is how many times did God reveal Oh. Sorry. Can be a whole lot. Right? A whole lot. There's many comings. So now, last slide. Now you have joy. Because you know, you know you don't have to suffer the wrath of God. You don't have to suffer the wrath, man. That just causes me to smile. 
Joy. Right? That gives us joy. That makes a Christian happy. Yeah. But how many Christians don't know this? They, they, they don't know the extent of what we're talking about. Because it, it's just... You know, to talk about sin and God's wrath against humanity, you know, you know, people freak, you know, so, you know, the pastor teachers, you know, they're this, they're scared of preaching the God, they're sp scared of preaching what the gospel is, they're scared of preaching about what sin is. It's, it's been dumbed down because it's attractional, it's, you know, we want to, we don't tick too many people off because, we, you know, we want our church to, I mean, you know, fill in the blank, it's, it really, we have, are we going to be judged for, for the, for the wishy-washy churches we have in America? I don't know. Well, he's Maybe God has already well, judged our church a, already because of His church. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it's it's yeah. You know, even the word sin, they're afraid to use the word sin. You that, know, yeah. But that's why like, gonna pay. you've got yeah. Noah, pay. Noah and in the end. ark. What do you hear about the worse. animals? Two by two, everything's great. We don't have, been we, down. we don't say. You don't want to that people. God was angry and destroyed his entire creation except for that ark. I mean, I, I, I really loved going to see that ark because it really... How many did he say? How many were in Noah's boat? Eleven? Nine? Eight. Eight. How many were in Noah's boat? Eight. 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 Total of eight. Because it's the number of new beginnings. Eight. Eight people. Mm -hmm. New beginnings. So Shem, Ham, and Japheth and there are three and wives, three. is that right? Mm -hmm. And then and Noah. Noah and his and wife. That's who was. You know what's hard with some of these theologians? that They, they can't wrap their brain around the wrath of God on the, ra on the wrath of Jesus, who is God. They, ca they can't... Well, that, that, that just can't be. That just can't be, because God wouldn't be wrathful on himself. So that's a stumbling block. You, you see a lot of, you know trying to rationalize expiation and propitiation and they, they can't wrap your brain can't about appeasement and all of that yeah. because they just, you know. They don't like to think of God as wrathful. They, yeah. They don't want to do it. Yeah. No, God is not wrathful. God is love. Oh, yeah. Man. Right, but they don't even know what love is. Right. Because the love doesn't mean that you just accept somebody the way they are. Love encourages you to change and change is painful. If you, if you look at wrath as justice, God's going to judge those people who hurt me, and he's going to, well, I've, I've already been judged with Jesus, so yeah. justice is part of his, his love right. because, because he, he cares for his creation. He cares for his church, right? Mm -hmm. So the byproduct of his love, I think. Mm -hmm. Richie, what do you think? <coughs> I've been taking a couple of notes here, and uh, I, I, I always consider just wrath as the simple uh, uh, righteous judgment against uh, a sinful humanity. And then I thought about what um, Lawrence said here about Israel, about aborting more Jews than um, that were killed in the Holocaust. And then I thought about how God's going to protect Israel. You know, so is Israel eventually going to feel the wrath of God, also? But then yet it's protected. Just I'm just thinking, yeah. thinking. So, you know, and that's it's very interesting though to hear that, you know. So, and then um, let's see what else do I have here. Let us. Okay, that's my Israel comment. Um, that's, that's it. That's pretty much what I have. And it seems like the Old Testament is all about the wrath that took place. New Testament talks about what's to come, you know. But not, there's really no wrath in the New Testament except for the mention of it coming. Yeah. Uh, so. Well, or what happened on the cross. Well, 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 that, yeah, that's that, pretty that's, wrath, that's wrathful, well, that's, <laughs> right? Is that a wrath? Of, I mean, did God have wrath yes, on his? Yes. But did God have wrath on his own son? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes he did. Yeah. He, 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 he made a way. That, that's the a substitution. Yeah. He deserved yeah. the wrath. Right. There you go. Right. He's our right. substitute for God's wrath. Yeah. yeah. Right. He put him. So, but yeah. see, yeah. Brian, most theologians won't go with you. They will not. They will not. Some, not. Some will. Some will. Some will. Some will. But some of them just can't wrap their brain around. Gerata, what do you say, girl? I think I like the way you taught us today with those questions, where, how, when, and why. And I think it made understand much easier. Uh, it's just very, in a simple way, such a deep concept. Yeah. yeah. It's great, I think. Lisa, what do you got? 
I didn't think that a green Tupperware lid was going to make me <laughs> have so much be thought so thought about it. Do you understand it though? You see? Yep. Did you did you understand it before? Not to that extent, no. Yeah. Ron? Yeah, I think it's it, I think it's uh, for me it's appealing to the uh, you know as far as like the purpose of evil you know it's and it's God's wrath I mean it, without it we, what's the point? Hey, Ryan, what do you got? I pretty much said what I wanted to say. Thank you. <laughs> Barb, is it? Or, uh, Jane, Jane. 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 I don't know why I got Barb for some reason, but Jane, yes. Do you, do you have a sister, Barb? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I looked at wrath as, you know, I didn't like the wrath of God. and So I, I have a different way of looking at it now, and I think you presented it very Clearly, and yeah. you know, with the repetition and everything, it was good. I, I, I caution you <clears throat> when you go out the door and you share this, you'll get eaten alive, <laughs> you'll get chewed up, right? Because, like Ryan said, people don't want to listen to this, they don't want to, yeah. right? they're not willing, they're not teachable, right? I mean, how many. People have I run into not teachable. No, God's not wrathful. No way, you're wrong. Heresy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know? God just wants us to be happy. Right. Donna? I, I loved your explanation of the mercy seat. I've always thought that was really beautiful, and so I appreciated everything you put together and, and that concept, and I thought it was great. And I love I love that the mercy seat explanation. Yeah, and I do too. Yeah, this <laughs> green Tupperware. <laughs> <laughs> I have one like that at home. I'm never going to look at it. Oh my gosh! Every day I'm going to look at that and I'm going to say, I don't want that wrath on me, so I'm going to just follow. I don't think I can use it for food anymore, though. It's a good reminder. Carol, what do you say, girl? What do you have? Just everything that everybody else say. I think it was a a much easier explanation than just putting words up there, you know, the, yeah. the where, what, how, when, you know. Yeah. It's always better when you have a, the teaching tool. It, yeah. Teaching tool's good, you're out right there. The yeah. teaching tool's yeah. good. Yeah. You know, Tommy, what's up? Oh, that was really good with the uh, mercy yeah. seat. That, yeah. But it's you got it now. I, got it. Yes, you I got have it. a further knowledge of it, yes. I now, like it. Yeah. Well, I, I thought of like you said justice and mercy, and I always want mercy instead of justice because the great theologian Clint Eastwood says we all got a coming kid. And I didn't know they had Tupperware back then. <laughs> I want to know where you found the rod that bought it. That's uh, really good for you. Where did I get the rod? Yeah. I walked out of my deck and I saw a limb there, so I just grabbed it. <laughs> <laughs> There are a lot of rods. And then I had to, I had to cut the sheets of paper from a piece of junk paper that Donna and I sit, sitting on the table. And I just, I hope I didn't lose a telephone number for you. Know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I, there was some popcorn there. Yeah. So I thought, I, I had popcorn. The only thing I got right was the popcorn. So I thought, manna, the staff, and, and uh, yeah. the yeah. Well, I know that other people have already said this, but I'm going to say this is just one of many things tonight. Uh, this is, this is a great topic, quite frankly. I, I, one of the problems with the, the modern church is uh, too much hyper grace. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, absolutely. and so I love this because it actually brings a lot of balance to the topic. Yeah. And the t I'm just going to say with the Tupperware thing, it's an easy concept to say Jesus, and I've even thought this way, he stands before the Father so that God sees us as he sees Christ, but... The illustration showing the other side of that door. Yeah, yeah. About the about. Top. It also keeps, yeah, it keeps our sin from God. That's how we think of it, but it keeps God's wrath. I I had never thought of it in that way before. Yeah. And that was a really cool illustration. I could. I was going to use the door. I was going to use door because <coughs> Jesus always said, "I'm the door, right? I am the door." Well, on that door is, you know, the door is open or door is closed. 
So it means it's keeping something out and it's keeping something in. It, a door keeps something from getting out and it keeps something from getting in. So I was thinking of using a door. And then when I saw the Ark of the Covenant, I said, oh, and did anybody see that video that I sent? Oh, yeah. yeah. Did you, by, by uh, yeah, what's great. the guy's name? Jordan Peterson. Jordan, did you see the vid? Did you enjoy that? Oh, yes. Yeah. Right. That was and I a, did all the scriptures, too. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of scriptures. Susan, you're, you're such an overachiever. <laughs> I just love the Lord and the Word of God. Because I wasn't that, planning on staying up as late as I did last night. Uh, it's a shame they don't talk about it more because I always, you know, there was a long time in my, in my faith where I, you know, came across a verse where, you know, vengeance is mine. So yeah. the wrath yeah. of you know, And yeah. so if we, you know, we can rest in that and just be at rest and be thankful that God's sovereign. Let God deal with it. He's going to deal with it. Plus, That's it right. gives us a big heads up. Like, if you want to go be vengeance towards someone else, you're going to get them coming back at you twice as much or whatever, how many times more. You know, if you want to go... The lid's coming off. Go punch <laughs> in the nose, whether they need it or not. But it's like, man, like, okay, you know, that's on you. I'm not going to... I'm not going to be vengeful or wrathful. That's God's got it. You, if you're going to do that to me, and you know, Dave, I, I'm thinking if they taught more truth in in the churches today, maybe we wouldn't have all of this muckluck running around the world today and all the stuff that's going on because yeah. people would fear the Lord and respect um, yeah. and not yeah. behave in a manner that we're going to say, well, it's again. God is love and it's okay. And it's really because one it's okay leads to another it's okay and nothing is okay. So that's all I got. Willer? Well, other than the fact that I think you need to get down on riding lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> John Deere. You know, I always thought of the wrath of God like Noah and, and uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, where he comes down. I never thought about the war, but in the Old Testament, it's always a war. You know, and so I never thought of the wrath being like that. And, you know, they come in and they kill everybody, you know. It's not like, you know, 10% of people die. They all died. You know, I mean, it's over and over again, but it's... Yeah. So um, I, I, I never thought about that as his wrath. I should clarify that because um, God poured out his wrath on, on the flood. Right? In that case, there was no war. There was no foreign army. Right? There was no foreign army. Foreign armies didn't happen until after that. After the after the flood and the the rainbow. Okay. Well that's when the nations started operating, right? And you have the Tower of Babel. And that the nation the, you, one, you read a passage about the Tower of Babel. Well then you have these nations beginning, and then we don't see God do anything outside of what? Outside of nations, we don't see that. Mm -hmm. But with the with the flood, well, there's no there's no army there. Right. That was that was without army. All right. <clears throat> it's you're up, Susan. What do you got? It's great. Um, I, I I can just say it's great. Done. I think it's good. We haven't seen the ark for 2,500 years. Mm -hmm. It's somewhere, and I think when it's revealed, I think we're all going to be stunned mm -hmm. where it was, how close we are to it, where it was. We didn't know it. Obviously, it's hidden from us. I, you know, I totally agree with that. But I just, it's, it's there because it is what it is, and it is powerful. And also, that you make the point is you can't talk about this out of this room. That's why I mean, I mean I've, had, I've had be some. Careful. I've had some people that look at me like, "You are, you're nuts." Mm -hmm. I, okay, you know, whatever. So there, and um, um, I scheduled a meeting with my minister this Monday, uh, two days ago, at nine o'clock in the morning because I, I, I had two concerns, two issues, and I, I called him because our church wanted to. A friend and uh, present Jesus to Muslims mm -hmm. and so they brought in expert they brought in an expert who had lived in Jordan for 15 years 
and now with part of the Reformed Church, and you know, so he's got experience and you don't. So I go to the class, man. I'm, I'm really? fully by the armor. Let, let's go. It's a real patient <laughs> listener. <laughs> and one woman asked, "Is it true that under the Muslim religion, you are given three choices when confronted?" Either convert, pay, or we kill you. Whatever you, whatever you like. And he, and is he, she said, is that true? And he said, no. It's not killing. Uh, that's not part of it. It's not. And mm. I, I was just stunned. Mm. I was just stunned that. And so I didn't. I didn't say anything because. It, but I wanted to at least do my job to present it to the minister, to the authorities, if you will, my, my pastor over me, that this happened. And uh, when he listened to me, and he was very nice, and he said, well, that's not the general norm today. I said, well, you're not reading the news, brother. But that's a whole other, so the point is, you can't rock the boat. I mean, I was going, no, man. And all, and all I said to him, I'm here as a sheep, talking to my sheep dog, because I don't want my fellow sheep hurt. You got to know what you're getting into when you go to, when you go to these people and why they act the way they act towards you. I don't know. It's peace and love. We've got to get along. We've got to share the gospel. I said, man, okay. Do I, I, I don't disagree with you, Doug. But, but, but I think Jesus wants us to rock, rock the boat because that's what he did. And he, he railed against religion. He railed against the norm. The norm. And he calls us to be radical di disciples and followers of him. And I'm, I'm not criticizing what yeah. you did. I think you did really right. But, but I, I think our, our, you know, the churches need to be shook up because, man, you know, people's eternity. And, and pe you know, to understand wrath, you can't understand grace without wrath. I mean, what, what, the, what Jesus did, so now I live my life. If I don't understand that, I live a wishy-washy life, not being a disciple. He calls me to, to a radical discipleship. So to understand grace, you have to understand wrath. Then when you understand grace, and, and out of thankfulness that I get to serve somebody that is put me into eternity and has given me a life on this earth, an abundant life, that I should, I owe my life to him. So without all that understanding prior, discipleship, ah, well, you know, I'm going to heaven, so it's okay. You know, we, we need to preach this. I don't care if we're persecuted. I don't, I don't care, you know, I, you know, because we are called to preach the truth in love, right? Mm -hmm. To speak the truth in love, not be, not be an idiot. But again, I'm not, and again, there's a time and place. That wasn't a time and place for you to do that. What I'm saying is, no. You know what? If we can't find a church or be part of a church that we can celebrate that. And, and again, there, there's a way to do that, especially with new believers. You have to bring them along the continuum uh, of, of this teaching because God is love too, but he's also wrath. So, a bit, you know, it's, it's, that, it's that the coin, the two kinds of this, you know, two, two sides of the same coin. How you do it is everything. Because some preachers are just stupid. Right. When, because they, they just don't do it in a way that honors God, even when they speak the truth. You know, it's a hell and brimstone type of thing. You know, it's, it, it's preaching the imperative without the indicative. That's you right. know, you, you, you teach works, That's discipleship, right. without who you are in Christ. You're screwed. Excuse my language. But you, you, you lost the battle before it yeah. even began. And see, and that's the key. We are in a battle. And okay. that's why we need the full armor of because God, God to protect God's us. Because God's truth liberates the right. soul and yeah. the mind, the transformation. So we can't be scared of the truth. And I think that's part of the problem because by the Holy Spirit in me desires truth. Okay. So if I have a wishy-washy pastor, you know, modifying whatever that truth is, God gives me the desire to know the truth. Yep. But when I know he's a loving God and that he saved me from wrath, man, praise God. Now, God, give it to me, you know. Purify my heart. Purify my soul. Bring the fire down, you know. Prune me because that's what a, good, that's what a great God does. So it's, it's that process of, of maturity and what that means in my life before heaven. And we talk about heaven. What, what about my life before heaven? Yes. Right? Eternity, yes, eternity is the indicative, but he wants my life to have an impact now. now. And that can only happen by what, thank God for Rick. I mean, this is great, Rick, and just being able to see how, how 
how awesome God, a, a terrible word, the attributes of God are so powerful when it's taught the right way. And this was taught the right, right. way. Because other side of wrath is grace. Wow. <laughs> the cross, we don't have an understanding what the what happened on the cross, really. I mean, this helps to explain it. But the power of the cross, I mean, what happened in, in substitution for me. And you can't even express it in words, really. And let me just to make my point. <laughs> Within the last 10 days, less than five blocks from my home, mm -hmm. a Muslim father killed his 18-year-old daughter. Oh. Well, that's I'm, right. That's right. right. And Timmy senior, Park. He, he was, senior he, at Andrew Timmy High Park. School. Timmy Park. right. Had, Honor she student. had dishonored the family. He had to straighten her out. And so he killed her in the front lawn. What, you, what did she do? Right. The mother, which is why she was well, they were divorced. They were divorced. They were divorced. She, she was not so, so, I mean, and this is, obviously this is an honor killing, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But th that's what we're up against. And that's why, uh, just send trusting, naive ladies into a Muslim and, and know that that Muslim is praying five times a day to kill you. Mm -hmm. Not that she's going to do it, but hey, when you talk about that five times a day, man, anyway, I'll mm -hmm. stop right here. Right well, here. Get me going. Right, but you never know when you speak the truth when it will take root. Right. It's right. You it's know, right. and so you just right. have to say it and then let it settle down. Can right. I, well, can saying I, it and act it, too. Mm -hmm. Can I yeah. read a couple yeah. of verses real quick? Go ahead, yeah. This is Ezekiel chapter 3, and, and I came across these like six months after I got saved years and years ago, and this is why I have no problem being because I'm more afraid of God than what people, their response to me is going to be. And I read this, and it just, to this day, it impacted me. It starting with verse 18. When I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you do not warn him or speak out Whoa. to warn the wicked yeah, from his wicked way that he may live, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at your hand. <laughs> Yet if you have warned the wicked and he does not turn from the wickedness or from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered yourself. That's good. Again, when a righteous man, so that's not even a wicked man now, when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and I place an obstacle before him, he shall die. Since you have not warned him, he shall die in his sin, and his righteous deeds which he has done shall not be remembered, but his blood I will require your hand. However, if you have warned the righteous man that the righteous should not sin, and he does not sin, he shall surely live, because he took the warning, and you have delivered yourself. When I read this, I interpreted it as being, it is our job to deliver the message. The result is not our responsibility. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit. That's right. That's and right. I'm more afraid of their blood being on my hand than I am of them, you know, being angry at me. Or, and I, maybe it helps that I probably am a little bit abrasive anyway. No, not you, Lawrence, never. <laughs> what verse was that again? Uh, uh, Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 3, 18 through 21. Uh, we love you, Lawrence. We love you, baby. I'm iniquity. No, what? Iniquity. You know, in, in the word iniquity and what he just read, that means to future generations, right? I mean, I can sin, but if my sin <clears throat> impacts someone else, that it's carried on to the next generation becomes iniquity, doesn't it? I, I don't know. Oh, I, that meant, you know that? I don't know. No? Dave? No? I, no, I kind of missed a little bit of that. I, 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 I lost my train of thought there. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're talking about the generational curses? No, I'm just saying that, you know, when, when it says here, it's the iniquity, uh, he shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Iniquity, I always understood it to be that if I sin, that's my sin. But if I pass it on, it becomes a continual sin of iniquity to oh, the generation. I, I, I'm not, yeah, I don't know. There's something for you to I study. I've got to figure it out. <laughs> okay, as we close here. What, what um, is the answer, Lawrence? <laughs>
<laughs> I gotta figure that one out. Uh, I want to say something here. We can be hard in the church, okay? We, we can be hard. We can be critical of the church. I get that. I understand that. I, understand. Um, I sent out a request to a, a group that I belong to, and I said, could you please explain to me ecclesia? Now, ecclesia is a term that has been translated to church, and it means the call out. The, the church. Well, today we have this thing called the church, and as I said before, it's three songs, prayer, <laughs> sermon, 15, 20 minutes, maybe 10 of it will be a personal story about the pastor, a little bread and wine, another prayer and another song, and we're out, and we're home, we're good, and we did church, okay? I don't think that's the ecclesia. No. So I, I can't get down on a pastor who gets 20 minutes to give a sermon, all right? I, even I tried the best I could when I was pastoring churches, you know, and, and I realized, okay, I got 20 minutes, maybe I'd take a half hour. And the, the guy in the front row is going, you know, like this, right? So I, I have a little leeway for the pastors. Some, some leeway. But in a situation like that, I'm disappointed that he, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. Um, now that's the education pastor. Oh, that's so educa Well, it's just, I, right. who he is is irrelevant, right? I mean, the, well, no, I don't want point, you to. The point that. is, um, we, I want to be graceful with the church. I want to be graceful because most of these guys, they they feel if they put something on Facebook and or send me a, a passage, they think they've done God's work. Or, you know, they, you know, I get I just it just amazes me. So. I'm learning about the Ecclesia. And the Ecclesia, from what I so far can understand when I go try to go back to the Greek, I'm, I gotta get a hold of some Greek guys who can really tell me what, what Jesus thought was the Ecclesia. What, what did he think was the Ecclesia? Did he think the Ecclesia was three songs, a sermon, and some bread and wine, and a prayer and out? Is that, is that, was that Jesus' idea of the church? Is that what he wanted? I, I don't know. I, I'm, ask, I'm asking. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I, I don't know. I, I, I think, though, um, it's good to talk. But shouldn't you, as a pastor, if you're going to step up and take that position as a pastor, shouldn't you be truthful? Yeah. I mean, shouldn't you yeah. not feel like it's not a popularity thing? It's huh. factual. It's, yeah. it's, it should be truth. You don't want to lead people down the wrong road. But you know, some of these pastors, some of these pastors, they just, you know, they don't know, and they, they're, they're trying. They're trying. I, I, I really feel. I, I tell you, who I really feel for Catholic priests. Yes. I hurt for those guys. I, I really mean that. Oh, I really mean. I feel bad for the Catholic priests that they have been duped into thinking that they cannot get married. Right. I mean, what, what a, what a horrible way to, to live your life thinking that. I, I can't get married. Oh, I, so I really have compassion for a, a Catholic Catholic priest. Didn't that change if you? But in the beginning in, of Catholicism, weren't they allowed to get married? They were the very at the beginning, but then it, it, in the 1500s or something, some guy I don't know that. It, it, right. It but I really have compassion for those guys because I've served on the um, uh, what do they call it. Uh, Pest, ministerial. Uh, ministerial Association for, for Tinley Park and for um, South, Holland. Uh, South Holland, too, and I would go to the Ministerial Association. And there's all these pastors, there's Presbyterians, Baptists, Lutherans, uh, they're all there, and there's the Catholic guys, and we're all there in our own room, and I walk in there and I just, I get this overwhelming feeling of, oh man, I, I, I'm dying for you, buddy. I, what are you here for? And the collar's on it. And I just felt so sorry for them, so sorry that they could not in, enjoy a marital sexual life they couldn't they they was withheld from them and they believed that it was withheld so i i Carol Noel, i have a special place in my heart for those guys i feel terrible for them as we close you did not learn oh, what did you learn about what, what what was the topic tonight the wrath of god what was the topic the the what the of what of love. Wrath of god. okay so you think you learned about the wrath of god right that's what you think do you think you learn about the rabbit? Yeah. 
You did not learn about the wrath of God. You learned about the grace of God. Tonight you learned about the grace of God. Because you know the wrath of God. I did not teach you the wrath of God today. I taught you the grace of God today. <laughs> Thank good, you, Rick. Yeah, that's good. That's good, Rick. Um, Don, pray us out of here. Sure, Don. Nice on. and loud. <laughs> hey, uh, one, I, I noticed usually when you open in prayer, you say Adonai. Adonai? Yeah, it is, yeah. is what? Like, yeah, it, 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 there's a number of names for God. No, because I was looking up, because I, I heard that one lady, her name was Brenda, I was talking about your identity in Christ, mm -hmm. and I was thinking about you're like Jehovah Rapha is the healer. Jehovah, Rapha, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, Jehovah Raya is the God provider. So, I don't know. Jehovah. Yeah, just happened I just, to have uh, right here. Adonai is Lord, right? Yeah, but I think um, we need to get to know the Lord better. Yep. So, in his name and who he is and whatever. So. The names have got to be great. Adonai, great topic. the Lord Master. Right? <laughs> you, you're all you're, you're Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we do thank you for this time. We do thank you that you took our place, my place, Amen. and put on a cross that we could uh, have abundant life. And everything we do and say, um, we do it to your glory. Just give us the strength to be witnesses and speak boldly and in love as we uh, meet other people along the way. Uh, just thank you for this group, thank you for Rick and his reputation, and just uh, thank you for who you are. In your son's name I pray. Amen. 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 Excellent.